So in this question, we have a car, mass 1,005 kg. I'm going to write that down as M. And what we want to do is we want to stop the car. So the final velocity of the car is going to be 0. Okay, It's initially actually travelling at 30 meter per second. So that's my initial velocity. What the driver does is that he applies his brakes so that F is actually his uh, braking force, his stopping force. And then this is the graph that's given of how the stopping force varies with respect to time. So this is actually my FT graph. So in the first part, you're asked to find the momentum of the car when it is initially traveling at 30 meter per second. So this is quite straightforward. So this is the initial momentum of a car. And we know that the momentum is the product of M times the, the velocity. And that will give me 1,005 kg multiplied by 30 meter per second. And that works out to be 4.5 times 10 to the power of 4 kg meter per second. Okay, so that's the answer for the first part. Next, in part B, you're asked to find the impulse due to the braking force. So what on earth is impulse? There are two equations that we are interested in. All right, so impulse number one, um, we know is equals to the total change in momentum of the object. All right, secondly, we can also find impulse by looking at area under the graph. But if you realize, um, and if you read on, you realize that you can't really find area under the graph because f max is known. And in fact, this is what you want to find later on. All right. So most likely, the the one that we are interested in is that the impulse is equals to the total change in momentum. Okay, and that will give us the final momentum. So remember, it's always final minus initial for change in a quantity in physics. And my final momentum is actually zero. And my initial momentum is um, 4.5 times 10 to the power of 4 kg meter per second. And that will give me negative 4.5 times 10 to the power of 4 kg meter per second. Okay, so that is my answer for part B. Next, you're asked to find the magnitude of the average stopping force. So how do we find average? So we've done this before in our previous example. Just let, let us write it down first. We know that the average stopping force is equals to the total change in momentum of the object over the total time taken. And how to remember? If you remember, the instantaneous force is equals to the rate of change of momentum. But here we are interested in average. So when we take average, we will find total over total. Okay, so let, let me be precise. Okay, so we've just calculated that the total change in momentum is actually this, and it's actually minus 4.5 times 10 to the power of 4. And if you look at the total time taken, the total time taken is actually... 20 seconds. So I'm going to divide by 20 and that should work out to be minus 2.3 times 10 to the power of 3. And we are looking at force, so the units is Newton. All right. Lastly, you're asked to find the value of F max. Now, where does F max occur? F max occur here. And how is this related to um, what we have found above? We know that the total change in momentum of the car all right can also be represented as area under the graph so this is actually the total change in momentum which is my impulse and how do we know let me just let me just let you recall this a great a, a bit we know f is equals to dp dt all right so if i integrate both sides with respect to delta t then over the time interval that I'm interested in, so that's dp dt, delta t, then what I have here for that time interval of uh, t1 to t2, okay, and this is area under ft graph. Okay, and if I simplify this and I integrate 
then what I will have is this will actually be the total change in momentum. So um, the impulse, and this is also known as impulse. So the impulse is also represented as area under the graph. So how do we look for this area under the graph? This is actually a triangle. So what we have is that you would have the impulse, which is, I'm going to just take the magnitude 4.5 times 10 to the power of 4 kg meter per second. Um, that is half. So this is a triangle. Base is 20 seconds. Height times base, which is 20 seconds, times height. My height is actually F max. Okay. And then solving for this, I should be able to get F max is equals to 4500 Newton. All right. So this is my answer. But very interestingly, if you look at what is the significance of average uh, force, we are looking at the concept of, therefore, if I have a single force and I want to attain the same change in momentum, what would be this single force that um, I'm going to apply? So I'm going to, ap therefore, apply a force which looks something like this, all right, whereby the area of this whole part represents also the impulse, the change in momentum, and it's ex exactly going to be equals to the area of this part as well. Okay, so that's the significance of this um, average force.